The following video is sponsored by Omaze, a site where you can win prizes by donating to charity. Use the top link in the description to find out more. Technology is a lot like time, it stops for no man. Out from the cassette tapes of old eventually came the compact discs, and yet from that you had another massive leap forward with the DVD. But things weren't gonna just stop there, and as DVD players and their discs were becoming popularized, another jump was made with Blu-ray. And looking back, you always think of these old formats, cassette tapes, VHS, DVD, but you don't often reflect on those that tried to be the next big thing and failed. 8-track tapes, laser discs, some of these showed real promise, but ultimately ended up as dead as the technology they strive to replace. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at a failed Blu-ray competitor with HD DVD. It was backed by Microsoft, and they tried to give Sony a run for their money, and, uh, well, they tried. The start of the Blu-ray revolution can really be attributed to the PlayStation 3 launch in 2006, as a Blu-ray player came built in. It actually nearly caused the downfall of the system. The PS3 was extremely expensive to manufacture, and Sony had to sell it at a loss in the hopes of making up that money later in other avenues. And a big part of that was Blu-ray, which was built into every single PS3 being sold. It's pretty clear to see Sony's game plan here, as it's one they've done twice before. The original PlayStation had a built-in CD player, in a time where CD players weren't super commonplace yet, making it that much more of a tempting purchase. The PS2 had a built-in DVD player right around the time DVD players were picking up Steam, often costing right around the same price as a standalone DVD player, but with the ability to play games, it was a no-brainer. And here with the PlayStation 3, we got Blu-ray, which would of course go on to become the standard of digital video. And even 15 years later, while the world has moved on to online streaming, if you do want to buy a physical copy of a movie, Blu-ray is what you'll be getting. And it's kind of necessary to understand what Blu-ray is before we can talk about HD DVD, something that was being developed at the same time as Blu-ray and would be in direct competition with it. So let's back up here a little bit. By 2006, DVD had only just become popularized and was the standard for the time. People had upgraded from VHS not that long ago, many of them in the 2000s. And so not a lot of people were looking towards the future quite yet, but DVD had its limits, mostly that it had a maximum resolution of 480i or 576i in PAL regions, but in other words, the video was always below high definition. High definition usually being regarded as 720 or 1080p. This was fine for the old thick CRT TVs, but with flat screens and high definition televisions slowly hitting markets, demand for better quality video wasn't far off. Blu-ray was developed in collaboration by a plethora of companies known as the Blu-ray Disc Founder Group, starting in the May of 2002 and including Panasonic, Pioneer, Philips, Thomson, LG, Hitachi, Sharp, Samsung, and of course, Sony. Sony and Panasonic would be the first ones to manufacture consumer Blu-ray products, and with the players slowly entering circulation, Sony would jumpstart the entire process by implementing it into their next big console, the PlayStation 3. To explain as simply as possible what makes Blu-ray a superior technology to DVD, regular DVD players use red lasers, Blu-ray players use blue lasers, and uh, blue is better. And so of course, Blu-ray wasn't the only attempts at using blue laser technology to make a new format of disc. And the story from here on out is a crazy one, but before that, add time. Today's video is sponsored by Omaze. Omaze is a website that supports charity and hosts a plethora of prizes, from sports cars to dates with celebrities to vacations, you name it. Such as this prize where you can win a $20,000 setup to level up your home PC and treat yourself to the best gear and parts out there. Donate $10 to enter for the chance to win the entire $20,000 setup, and your money goes to good use with the charity called Gamers Outreach. They provide recreation to children in hospitals through the power of video games and the gaming community, helping kids get through often lonely and scary experiences during their hospital stay with their medical grade gaming kiosk called the Go Kart. Go to amaze.com 91tech and donate $10 to enter for the chance to win a prize of your choice, possibly that $20,000 PC setup, that would be pretty sweet. Huge thank you to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Please, please consider entering. $10, I mean, that's like two Starbucks coffees or something. And it can make a real difference. Plus, you could win, and that would be awesome. Again, that's omaze.com slash 91tech. Thanks again to Omaze, and let's get back to the video. 
So looking before the next generation of consoles, Sony was on top of the world in the video gaming market. For some perspective on just how successful the PlayStation 2 was, here were the sales numbers compared to other consoles in the same generation, 155 million units sold. And if you took the Xbox, GameCube, and Dreamcast, combined them, you'd get roughly about a third of the numbers Sony accomplished. If anyone was set up to introduce an entirely new format of disc, it was going to be Sony. But there was a problem. The PlayStation 3 when it came out would be very expensive, and it had very few launch titles. Plus, the Xbox 360 came out an entire year beforehand. Sony was already late to their party, and their slow start as well as a general lukewarm reception in the beginning towards Blu-ray, as of course DVD was still the industry standard, meant that things were still very much up for grabs. And until the majority of consumers cared about watching high-definition video, there was a real chance another company would be able to beat out Blu-ray for the physical disc crown. Enter Toshiba, a big company notably lacking from the list of Blu-ray founders. They of course developed their own blue laser high definition format, first called Advanced Optical Disc, and quickly renamed to HD DVD. So come 2005, and negotiations were held to try to come to a compromise between Blu-ray and HD DVD. Both were very close to hitting markets, and there was a strong desire to avoid an all-out costly format war. But there were problems. Software-wise, Blu-ray companies preferred to use a Java-based platform, whereas HD HD DVD preferred Microsoft's HDI, which worked differently. In the August of 2005, it was announced that negotiations had failed, and that meant there would be an incompatibility with disc players moving forward, and as such, there would only be one victor. So we've heard Microsoft's name, and it's worth noting because of their platform, they had a very big stake in all this. They, along with Intel, would announce support for HD DVD that September. The Xbox 360 would launch in the November of 2005, and the following January in 2006, Bill Gates would announce at CES that Microsoft would offer an add-on HD DVD drive for the console, costing a hefty $199. Games would not use this new format, so it was completely optional. But if you wanted to launch HD DVDs, you would need the add-on. No 360 would ever have the player built into the system. And right from the get-go here, it should be clear this was never going to succeed. The PlayStation 3 was considered overpriced, and it started at $499 when it launched at the end of 2006. The Xbox 360 started at a much more appealing $299 for the low-end model. But to add another $200 on top of that, only to play higher-definition movies. That was about it. In a time where most didn't even have high-def TVs? Well, who's gonna pay that? Seriously. You get $300, you can play the games. Who on earth is gonna pay an extra $200 to watch some movies? Not to mention the real kicker in all this. The original Xbox 360s didn't have an HDMI port. Meaning, even if you got the HD DVD player, you'd still have to use component cables and wouldn't be able to to fully experience the higher resolution. 1080p content would be downscaled to 1080i or lower, which might sound similar, but it's different, trust me. So while movies might look better than normal, you still weren't getting your money's worth. Interestingly, this player is compatible with PC, although you need the software capable of playing HD DVD titles. So I bought all this on eBay for quite cheap. The whole package was uh, maybe $50 Canadian. And uh, along with the player there, which we'll get to, I also got a few actual HD DVDs with it. And it's kind of cool to see the contrast in the design of the cases next to Blu-rays. We've got the red shell versus the blue, and both cases are a bit smaller than your older DVD case. I've never disliked the look of Blu-ray cases, but gosh be darned, I really like this red. The Blu-ray logo is nicer looking to me than the HD DVD wordmark, but I don't know, I really love that red look. In the very least, waltzing into your nearest video rental place, it would have been pretty obvious which was which. But let's look at the player itself. It looks like a miniature Xbox 360, which is kind of hilarious, although standing it up like you might want to gives you no access to either the DVD drive or the ports, and so it's supposed to be used horizontally, which to me, after using my 360 for years vertically, just feels wrong. Like seriously, this thing is so darn cute. Why couldn't you stand it up like the 360? That would be awesome. It's actually a bit inconvenient if you do use your 360 vertically, as it's too awkward to place on top of the console, which means you have to place it just like right beside it. The ideal setup though is going to be to lay the console down horizontally and place the player on top. We can plug this thing into the console via USB, specifically that old mini USB connection. You remember these things? So we plug that into the player and then into the 360. This 360 here, by the way, is the 2009 arcade version, which actually does have an HDMI port, which is great, meaning I'll be able to watch my HD DVDs to their full potential. Lucky me. We also have this AC adapter to plug it all in, which is typical. There are a couple extra USB ports on the HD DVD player, which was awesome, as it gave you an extra port once plugged into your 360. I really like devices that do this. It's so easy 
easy to fill up USB ports quickly, especially once you start plugging in more add-ons like the eventual connect or a wired controller or a network adapter. Speaking of which, there's also a clip for attaching a wireless network adapter. 360s back in the day did not have built-in Wi-Fi, so you would need to plug in this little thing over USB or use Ethernet. And in the process of all this, I learned for the first time that 360s of the era actually had a clip for themselves on the back for you to put the adapter on, meaning I had this thing hanging from my console for years for no reason when I could have simply attached it to the actual console. My mind is absolutely blown, and I can't believe I never knew this was a thing. Regardless, you can plug it into your HD DVD player instead, and you would still have a convenient place to put it. But okay, turning on the console with this attached, we don't really see anything different to start. There was an installation disk back in the day that I don't have, but it had a uh, very old dashboard update for those who had never updated their console due to a lack of internet, so because, you know, I've updated my console at some point in time, I've already got support for all this. So going into apps, we can see there's an HD DVD app that's popped up, which gives us access to the player. So hey, I guess good on Microsoft for, you know, keeping support for the hardware even all these years later. So I guess we need to put a movie in now. And lucky for us, the eBay listing I bought included a few good options. They gave me King Kong, Full Metal Jacket, Apollo 13, and a box set of the first three Mission Impossible movies, which is awesome. Apollo 13 actually happens to be one of my favorite movies, so let's start with that one. To start off, we get this cool HD DVD animation after the Universal logo, and then from there we get the menu. Kind of funny seeing all these different special features. I forgot how big a deal that was in marketing back in the day. Since discs could fit a lot more storage than DVDs, they were able to cram in all this extra stuff. The menu is very much from the mid-2000s, and uh, navigating it is kind of fun. Or, you know, we could also play the movie, which displays in the expected 1080p as promised awesome. It looks good. It's kind of interesting that most of these movies I have here were already older when they were made. Full Metal Jacket is from the 80s, Apollo 13 came out in 95, and of course there's the first two Mission Impossibles. Mission Impossible 3, however, did come out in 2006, and King Kong 2005, so neither of those movies were terribly old by the time HD DVD would have hit store shelves. If you're a movie enthusiast, you might notice that these are all done by three studios, Paramount, Universal, and Warner Brothers. And that actually brings us to the next stage of the high definition format war in the story of HD DVD. So let's go back to October 2005, and you've got the big six as they were called. Universal Studios, Paramount Pictures, and Warner Brothers exclusively chose to host their films on HD DVD, whereas Sony Pictures, Disney Studios, and 20th Century Fox all chose Blu-ray. It wouldn't take long for Warner Brothers and Paramount to begin adding support for Blu-ray, which was a hit to HD DVD, but not all was lost. In the August of 2007, after supporting Blu-ray for a year at this point, Paramount suddenly announced it would exclusively release high-def content to HD DVD, except for titles directed by Steven Spielberg. I don't know why, but uh, yeah. DreamWorks Animation, you know, the makers of Shrek, also announced it would exclusively release to HD DVD. So this was a definite win, and it would have been really good news for HD DVD had it not been for what came a couple months beforehand. Blockbuster at this time was the largest American movie rental company, and that June of 2007, they decided to exclusively rent Blu-ray after finding in test markets that they had made up 70% of rentals. And then you had the big retailer Target that July beginning to only sell Blu-ray players. Not all hope was lost at this point, but HD DVD did seem to be at this weird tug of war between a few big studios keeping it alive through exclusive support versus retailers dropping it left and right. In the January of 2008, the biggest shot yet was fired. Warner Brothers, which has the largest market share of DVDs, announced their intentions to completely drop support for HD DVD that June. Toshiba, remember Toshiba? I feel like I haven't mentioned them much, but you know, they were the ones who made all this. And they quickly expressed disappointment in Warner Brothers, as well as plans to continue promoting their format and cutting prices for their players in half. But the move by Warner Brothers was soon echoed by other studios, and Walmart would phase out HD DVD completely. And uh, well, they were the largest DVD retailer in the United States. Kind of a big deal. Best Buy was solely recommending Blu-ray to consumers at this point. And there was also a little known online video rental service that began phasing out HD DVD altogether. You probably haven't heard of them, they were quite small at the time. I believe it was some obscure company that would mail out DVDs called, um, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, Netflix. February of 2008, Toshiba announced that it would stop all manufacturing and marketing of HD DVD players. Universal moved fully to Blu-ray, Paramount was the last holdout, and a day later it finally announced they would back Blu-ray. And it was over, just like that. HD DVD had a shockingly short life 
and the fact that it died so soon despite so many huge companies throwing millions into backing it is quite astonishing. You had Toshiba, of course, but you also had some of the biggest movie studios out there, not to mention the tech giant that was Microsoft, all pushing HD DVD tech. But that PlayStation 3 with Blu-ray built in, personally, I think was the true deciding factor, as consumers didn't want to buy yet another new video player. Don't forget, many people at this point had already gone through this multiple times. They bought a VHS player only for them to need a DVD player, and now they were expected to go and buy a whole nother system just to watch movies, but if it was built into a gaming console, which was of course going to sell regardless, that was a different story. The HD DVD add-on for the Xbox 360 was almost the price of the console itself, and I doubt it's any surprise to most people that it just didn't sell. I mean, who's going to buy it just to watch movies in a higher definition that you might not even be able to properly use in the first place? By the time Toshiba gave up, around 1 million HD DVD players had been sold, including the Xbox 360 add-on. By this time, approximately 10.5 million PS3s had been sold, and hence 10.5 million Blu-ray players. What's really crazy is that by now, Xbox would have sold almost double that amount, around approximately 20 million consoles worldwide. Had they built in HD DVD to the system, this no doubt would have been a completely different story, and we probably would be buying movies today with a red shell. But at the same time, this also would have significantly raised the price of the hardware, and so who knows how the console wars would have actually shaken out. At the beginning, no one cared about the PS3's Blu-ray, but it became a huge selling point midway through the generation, and it's in large part thanks to that that it actually eventually surpassed the 360, selling around 87 million to Microsoft's 84 million. Sony might have taken a loss at first due to the console being so darn expensive to make, but they more than made up for it with the revenue brought in from Blu-ray, as well as the game sales and so on and so forth. It's just fascinating to me how integral the disc format war played into the console war of the generation, and while this HD DVD player might have failed, it's still super cool to look at all these years later. Shortly after Toshiba's announcement to end things, Microsoft would discontinue the HD DVD player, and two days later it was sold at a reduced clearance price of only $50. Ironically, about what I paid for it today. Microsoft would never sell an external Blu-ray drive, and so Xbox players would have to wait until the 2013 Xbox One to finally be able to access Blu-rays. Or, you know, they could get a Blu-ray player separately. HD DVD versus Blu-ray was a messy and very lopsided war, and had those initial negotiations come to a compromise, this may never have been an issue in the first place. But everyone wanted the whole pie for themselves, not just a piece. And hey, out of it came this very obscure piece of tech and gaming history, which means a video for me, so I'm not complaining. I really find all this stuff just so interesting, so if you do too, maybe hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason, and we do have a Discord, link in the description. Also, another big thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. It's a great organization, so again, omaze.com slash 91 tech. Please take a look, maybe donate, maybe don't, but uh, at least take a look at it. And with that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.